Hey guys, what's up? So these past couple of weeks, we've seen some amazing new Max drop ranging from the very affordable new M4 Mac mini to the very expensive, but ultra powerful M4 Max MacBook Pro. And while all Macs are definitely not created equal, they do all have one thing in common, and that is that upgrading the internal storage is insanely expensive. Now, at the beginning of this year, I made a video called the ultimate solution to expensive Apple storage. And in that video, I presented a new NAS drive by Ugreen, more specifically, the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus as my ultimate solution to the expensive Apple storage problem. A lot of you guys watched that video and judging by the comments, you seem to be really interested in this particular solution. At the same time, the product was still in the Kickstarter phase, which is why some people were a bit hesitant to pull the trigger. And that is of course, completely understandable. But now that Ugreen's NAS lineup is readily available for purchase on Amazon and other places, I've been getting a lot of questions from people asking how the NAS held up and whether I'm still as enthusiastic about it as I was when I created that first video. So I thought instead of answering the same question multiple times, why not create a little update video for you guys and show you how I use this NAS in my workflows and why having a local cloud indeed solves a lot of my storage problems. Let's ramble. Hold up, days go by when I pull up. They all on me like a once. So yeah, we all know Apple storage is super expensive. I mean, take the M4 Mac mini, the money it would cost to max out the storage buys you almost two whole entire base model Mac minis. Similarly, maxing out the storage on the M4 Max MacBook Pro will cost you a whopping $2,200. Yeah, you heard that right, $2,200. I think we can all agree that this is absolutely insane. And so it's only logical that people are looking at alternative options for their storage needs. In other words, buying the lowest amount of internal storage that is feasible for you to comfortably run your Mac and supplementing that with external storage. Now, the most straightforward way to do that is investing in some external SSDs. They're quite fast, especially the Thunderbolt drives, and compared to Apple's internal storage, they are relatively inexpensive. Plus, you can use them between machines. You see, the biggest downside of buying internal storage is that you can only use it on that specific machine. In other words, if you have multiple computers, you're gonna have to invest in internal storage multiple times for every single machine. External SSDs solve that problem because you buy them once and you can use them between your machines, which makes them an even cheaper option. But external SSDs have some pretty serious downsides too. The SSDs can get lost. The maximum storage capacity is quite limited. Increasing that storage capacity can quickly add up and become very expensive as well. And if you don't have it with you, well, it's obviously useless because you won't have access to it. And that is where NAS systems become a really attractive alternative. Earlier in the year, Ugreen released the first line of NAS systems. And I gotta say, they really hit the ground running. This particular one is the Ugreen DXP4800 Plus. I've been using it for almost nine months now, and it's been great. So just a very quick summary in case you're entirely new to NAS systems and you haven't seen the previous video about this thing. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, and it is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a bunch of storage connected to your network than the internet, which means you can store all of your files and data in one place and access it anytime and from anywhere without having to put anything in the cloud. So you're basically creating your own little cloud of which you have full control. I won't go into any detail about the design and the build and other basics of the DXP4800 Plus because if you're interested in that, you will definitely find what you need in my previous video. For the purpose of this video, I wanna show you how I actually make use of this thing and how I make this work as my main storage solution so I can can keep the internal storage on all my devices reasonably low. So when I received this NAS from Ugreen for testing earlier in the year, without too much noise from the drives. And this NAS is definitely built for that purpose. Not only does it look nice, but for instance, it has an SD card slot on the front so you can offload your files and footage directly to the NAS without the need to dump it on your computer first, which is quite nice. And it also has a very fast 10 gigabit ethernet port on the back, 
Now, if you take something like the M4 Mac Mini Pro, which also has an optional 10 gigabit ethernet port as well, you can transfer files between the NAS and your Mac Mini real fast. You can reach download speeds of up to 1250 megabytes per second, which is equivalent to downloading one terabyte of files in about 20 minutes. The 12th gen five core Intel processor definitely helps with that. This use case is fantastic if you wanna keep it on your desk and your storage needs are not too crazy. For me personally, however, that's not really the best use case because I work with huge video files because of this YouTube channel. And because I like to keep all of my footage, I'll run out of that kind of storage real fast. So what I did was I invested in some very large capacity Iron Wolf Enterprise drives, turning this NAS into an absolute storage beast. I haven't quite maxed out the maximum storage capacity of 112 terabytes, but the setup I went for can easily hold all of my video files, and I still have plenty of storage left that should easily last me for the next years or so. The downside of these large capacity enterprise drives is that they're super noisy, which means it is no longer ideal to keep the NAS on my desk. But that's what I love about NAS systems because it doesn't really matter where you install it. You can have access to it from wherever you are, literally anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. Now, in my case, I place it in the kitchen area of the studio so I can't hear it when I'm working. And when I'm actually sitting in the kitchen, I won't hear it either because I'm not working, so it will be idle mostly. Plus, I have it hooked up to my fancy router, which also has a 10 gigabit ethernet port, so transfer speeds within the office are still blazing fast whether it's on my desk or not. But like I said, the NAS can be accessed from anywhere in the world, either via the app or a remote network connection. And that makes my life so much easier because I can sync my photos and videos remotely in real time. And after a day of shooting, I can go to my hotel room and upload all of my footage to my NAS here in the studio. That way I can avoid using SSDs and have the peace of mind knowing that my footage is safely stored here in my studio so I can format my SD cards and use them again the next day. It also means I can give access to the NAS to other people I'm working with. So I could upload my footage remotely to the NAS and my editor could be in another part of the world, log on to that same NAS, grab the footage and start working with it. But just to give you an idea how powerful these things actually are, I could even watch a movie I have stored on this NAS from my hotel room in another country. As long, of course, as the internet connection is decent. I love that. The NAS also has some nifty AI features like intelligently identifying and classifying people and places in your photos. You can even select specific photos and train it in customized mode so it can recognize the objects you defined when you upload the next time. Now, I personally don't use those features very much, but it's cool to know that it's there and I'm sure this will be super useful for photographers, for instance. The super fast transfer speeds in the office and the remote access to all of my stuff anytime and from any place is where it's really at for me. The added layer of security is an added bonus for me because compared with cloud drives, NAS Sync has a built-in security manager, which means I can store personal data in trusted local devices without having to worry too much about leakage and surveillance. Now, I do think it's important to keep in mind that even though these NAS drives use RAID configurations, which are designed to help prevent any data loss, again, if you wanna know the details of how that works, please watch my previous video, but even a NAS is never 100% fail safe no drive ever is. So if you do decide to invest in a NAS, which I would 100% recommend you do, always make sure you have data backed up in at least one more place, preferably offsite. I have my NAS automatically back itself up to a cloud device. So I have the peace of mind that in the unlikely event the NAS fails or there's a fire in this place, I'll also have my footage backed up there. So guys, I hope I've been able to answer your questions. Please give the video a like if it was useful. I'm definitely still very happy with this NAS and it is still my main data hub for all of my footage and other important files. It helps me sleep a lot easier knowing that I can access my data no matter where I am and not having to purchase expensive Apple storage over and over again is very nice. If you want to check out the Ugreen NAS Sync DXP 4800 Plus or any of their other NASes, there is a 15% off for Christmas until the 22nd of December, both on Ugreen and Amazon.com. Links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.